Hi drummers, hope you're well. I wanted to talk to you quickly here about jamming along with music and playing by ear and all that kind of good stuff and where that fits in for a drummer's developing. I've done loads and loads of videos on this channel about grade stuff, but I don't want to give the impression that doing grades is like the only thing involved in developing your drumming. It definitely isn't. It's a brilliant tool and it's a brilliant thing to have at the heart of your learning, but it isn't the only way to go about uh, practicing the drums. For me, there are three main areas, three sort of skill groups to think about for the developing drummer. The first area is physical skills and we practice this by doing drum rudiments and exercises like that. So if you think about it, physically you need to be able to do things to play the drums well. You need to be able to hit the drum cleanly, you need to be able to play with smoothness, with flow and in some cases with some good speed as well, with various stickings, with your sticks and with your feet as, of course as well. So that's one huge part of it, physical skills, that's the first thing. The second thing is, well, the academic study of music, man. So learning music theory, typically this is where the grade thing comes in, learning what a quarter note is, what an eighth note is, crotchets and quavers, note values, yeah sure, reading music, all the tools of the trade that come together to make music and learning all that stuff is invaluable. I wouldn't be anywhere near like the things that I do today if I hadn't have done that in the past. So that's typically where the grade thing would come in. So that's the second area, sort of the academic study of music, so you actually know what's going on, music theory. But this third area is huge, and I think sometimes drummers miss out on this. This is the sort of musicality stuff. It's listening to music, jamming along, playing by ear, all that kind of good stuff. Now for some drummers, this is the main practice that they do, or in some extreme cases, the only practice that they do, just sticking on music and bashing along and sort of hoping for the best. I wouldn't really recommend that. But the, as one of the three ingredients for the developing drummer, this is absolutely essential. So I've noticed this, I don't know if this is partly because I don't know where I teach in Cambridge, there's quite a lot of people, they're very studious, sort of engineers, scientist type people, and they're amazing. And what they're really great at is getting stuck into the grades, and they love music theory, they love reading, and it, they rightly think that that's absolutely fascinating, and they're really excited about that, and they love the systems involved in music. And then sometimes they sort of need quite a bit of a nudge to actually do this, to, to, go, to get away from a musical score, and just to put music on, and just to start jamming. Um, there are plenty of other people, of course, who they love to do that, of course that's great. So, and, and often I've found drummers who haven't maybe had lessons or had a session with a, with a drum teacher before, not always, but often this is the thing that they've done the most of, again, just putting on music and playing. So this is the third area, musicality, jamming with music, uh, developing our feel, developing our, our musical ear. The three areas, again, because I think this is so, so important, and often drummers don't have this very clear in their head, so this is my advice. Three main areas for developing if you're, if you're a serious drummer. One is physical skills, drum rudiments are the way to do that. The second one is academic skills, man, learning about music, theory, so grades, uh, and learning music is the main way to go about that. And then the third area is musicality. Being creative perhaps, listening to music, jamming along, taking all that stuff that you've learned when you've done your academic study and making some great music with it. That's, that's huge. Now the, thing, the other thing to say about this is, I think often people think that like reading music and the academic side of music and playing by ear, so to speak, are in some way like opposites or drummers would choose to do one thing or the other. That's nonsense. You can absolutely do both of those things. In fact, I totally, wholeheartedly recommend that you do both of those things. So, and they'll just feed each other brilliantly. So if you're learning music, if you're learning grades and you know all the, all the music theory stuff, if you know crotchets and quavers and how that all works, that will totally feed and inform and aid your musical ear when you're listening to music and working stuff out that way, when you're not, not looking at a musical score. But then in the same way, if you've got a great musical ear and you've heard loads of music and you've got a great feel for a song, like we said before actually on this channel quite a lot, that, that makes looking at a piece of music and reading it infinitely easier as well. So a musical ear and a musical brain are not things you have to choose between. Do both of those things. I'm going to say it one last time because it's such an important point. The three main areas, physical skills, academic music theory skills, and then musical skills, hearing music, playing it back, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to talk here about the third area, which is putting music on, jamming along. Now what I've done here is I've created some playlists of uh, some great tunes to play along to. And I've done it in terms of musical styles or really feels of music. I've gone for the straight eights feel, the triplet feel, the 16th note feel, and the shuffle and the halftime shuffle. These are sort of fledgling playlists at the minute. Please send me your suggestions for songs. Now the only criteria for a song to go on each, any of the lists is it's a, fun, it's a good song, it's fun to play along to. It's predominantly got one feel all the way through because that's what this is about really. 
and it's also ideally got some good drumming on it as well because part of this is just playing along with music hearing the drumming and kind of assimilating it as you go along so a great example is if you have a song and you play it uh, quite a few times in practice again we're just doing this by ear we're not using a musical score here what will happen is as you play it a few times you'll get a feel for where the stops and starts come where the drum fills come in any sort of changes in feel if there are any where it lifts up dynamically or comes down again so that's uh, this is this is the big idea these are the stars i'm going to recap them really quick the first uh, playlist is a straight eights feel this is the classic rock or pop beat that you'd see at grade zero grade one That kind of thing. Obviously, that's the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg, the example I've given there, but that's the core version. You could play your, your lead stick on the hi-hat, trashy hi-hat, on the ride, on the crash, on the floor, Tom, depending on the music. But that kind of one and two and three and four and feel. The next one would be the triplet feel. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Sometimes called the 12-8 feel. Its history is blues music, this kind of thing. And in the classic sort of my first drum beat, a drum fill thing there, uh, three notes per beat, triplet fill, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. This is based on eighth note triplets. Next one would be 16th note feel, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, four notes per beat. Whereas the eighth note feel has two notes per beat on the hi-hat, the triplet feel has three notes per beat on the hi-hat or whatever, wherever your lead hand is. The 16th note feel has four beats on the hi-hat, four hits on the hi-hat. So with the triplet feel and the 16th note feel, one of the things to think about is whether you're going to play with one hand on the hi-hat, which typically you do for slow up to medium tempo tunes, or two hands on the hi-hat, which typically you do for faster tunes. So triplet feel, for example, slow you'd play it with one stick on the hi-hat, as it got faster, you could do two sticks on the hi-hat, right, left, right, left, right, left. Likewise, the 16th note feel up to a certain speed. You can play with one stick on the hi-hat, gives a great feel. As you get faster, typically you change to two hands on the hi-hat. Where your right stick would come across to hit the snare, or your lead stick would come across to hit the snare. I should say for a more detailed explanation of the grooves and fills for each of these styles, the first video of each playlist uh, will we'll go into much more detail there. Um, then we've got the shuffle. This is when we play an eighth note feel. But instead of playing straight eighth notes on the hi-hat or the ride or whatever, we're going to swing those eighth notes. One and two and three and four. And that one's based on the triplet feel. It's like the first and the third of each triplet is played, but the middle one is missed out. So typically when you get to a drum fill there, again in the very basic first case, triplets themselves work pretty well for the fill. And finally the halftime shuffle, this is where we're playing exactly the same uh, pattern on the hi-hat, one and two and three and four and, but the snare drum hit rather than being two and four, is beat three. I'm going to recap these real quick. Straight eights feel. Triplet feel, one hand on the hi-hat. Triplet feel, two hands on the hi-hat. Mm -hmm. 
16th note feel, one hand on the hi hat. Sixteenth note feel, two hands on the hi hat. Shuffle, regular shuffle. And finally, half time shuffle. And hopefully this is all making a bit of sense. Um, if you have any suggestions for any cool songs that have any of those feels, predominant feels, and uh, we can add those to the playlist as, as we go along, just let me know. Have a ton of fun. Remember, this sort of practice is the perfect complement to, firstly, your physical skill building, your drum rudiments, can't recommend those enough, and then all your, your grade stuff or whatever you're doing to learn music academically. Really recommend it. Do not miss this bit out. It's crucial for consolidating all your, all your lovely skills. It's enormous fun. And you've got to remember, as drummers, we can do a thing that no other instrument can do, which is just that we can put on music and we can jam without worrying about what key it is, what the notes are. You know, if you're playing piano or guitar, don't get me wrong, I love those instruments and I play those as well. If I pick up my guitar, there's no way I can play a song unless I know what key it's in, what the chords are, man. You're just lost. If With drums, because we're playing this unpitched instrument, if we know the feel of the music, we can get playing straight away. And it means an entire amazing world of music opens up to us for having fun uh, jamming along. So go for it. And uh, I'm not saying you'll end up playing the song note for note, but you will have enormous fun and you can you know, do that thing that drummers actually do a lot when they're playing, even when they're playing a cover of a song, which is not necessarily playing note for note, but getting the right feel in each section, punctuating it. And you might you know, develop your own drum feels, all that kind of good stuff as well. Hope that all makes a bit of sense. Any questions, give us a shout. See you soon. Thanks a lot.